next paper is uh, about condition control using probability correction. Uh, Marcin uh, is the first author. He's going to present the results. Uh, the other two authors are Warren, George, and uh, Lars. Uh, uh, they all used to be part of all the universe, but I believe Lars is pretty that, right? Yeah, I can start by the Yeah, that, yeah, right. Right, thank you. So, as um, was said by Marcin, I'm going to microphone. Sorry. You can use this one. Kind of more 
detailed characteristics of the, of the network conditions that can help you to do the proper congestion control. And the sender has the task of doing the short-term adaptations and long-term adaptations to the changing conditions in the network. The short-term adaptations may involve error resilience, congestion control, or adaptive source coding, whereas the long-term adaptation can be, can be such general, general uh, things like choice of the, of the record. Uh, this slide is, is just to present the, the error, existing error resilience mechanisms for the, for the congestion control, for the conversational uh, multimedia communication, and it deals with NAMP, reference picture selection, slice size selection. Okay? And uh, the whole point of it is to show that there are no, there are no ideal error resilience mechanism that works in every condition. And uh, we see that, for example, NAC is, is kind of the least tolerant of these in terms of packet loss and end-to-end -end delay. Whereas FEC is, is kind of more usable if the delay is higher and the, the loss rate is, is also high. But the, the loss is, cannot be too high because uh, FEC is, is kind of not, not, very, not very useful in, in terms of burst losses because it does, it does not deal with this. So about for error correction, how, how it works. It's, it's a redundant stream that is run on top of the, the media stream. So let's, let's take this picture as an example. We have RTP stream that contains some number of packets. And then we use this packet number one and packet number two as the input for the generation of the fact packet that is sent alongside. And it is primarily used to recover lost packets. So if, uh, for example, packet number two gets lost, then, and the fact packet that protects packet number one and number two arrives, then the receiver can use the fact packet together with the packet number one to, to recover the lost packet. And there are various fact scams available. Uh, the most popular one is the XOR-based priority, and we use this this, this type of fact in, in our research. And we have not investigated how, uh, what, what is the impact of usage of different fact scams for, 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 the, uh, for our solution. So what are, the, what are the current approaches to congestion control? Here is, here is a list of, of existing congestion control solutions. There's DFRC, there's RAP, there is RRTCC and CNADU. These two we have used to compare our design algorithm performance against and from the newest solutions there is none and what is what is common between all these all these congestion control solutions is that the error resilience mechanisms and congestion control are completely decoupled in all these solutions. There are also two other solutions that we should mention. One is MS FTP and this is the solution that links the error resilience and congestion control by using PEC, but it does it for the students. And there is also SVC, which is another way of doing the congestion control, but it's more suitable for, for the conference scenarios with MCUs. So our approach that uses it is for our approach. The, the first question to answer is, can, can the FAC be used for, for rate control? We know that it's primarily used for the, as, as the error protection. And in the error, error protection, we, we try to avoid any losses, and if there are losses, we try to, we try to make up. On the other hand, rate control aims always at providing the maximum, the optimal network utilization. So there is always, in, 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 in rate control, there is always this risk that we will overshoot the, the link capacity. Then this will lead to congestion losses, which then are mitigated by the, by the congestion control. So it might seem that these two worlds of error resilience and congestion control are stating in the, are, are having the opposite aims. But what, what we also know is that rate control always requires probing for capacity. Uh, like TCP does the same, it's 
but it's, it just increases the rate by, by probing if there is a failure rate, and it just knows if, if it loses the, loses the packet, and it does, just does not care because it's, it's, it's an, elastic, an elastic type of traffic application. Whereas for, for multimedia, conversation on multimedia, we must try to avoid any losses at all, but this, but this probing is, is always required. So what is our idea? Is to use back to probe for available bandwidth. And this provides additional stream protection during the, during the, during the probing phase. And, if we, and as we are more protected, we can, we can then be more aggressive in our probing and provide kind of quicker sending rate ground. So let me let me now explain explain this concept by, by, by the following example. On the on the y axis there is a throughput and on the x axis there is a time. And the time units are some kind of uh, virtual RTCP intervals. So after each RTCP interval we need to decide what do we want to our center. And this is the let's say hypothetical available capacity in the chart. So in the beginning we are sending some rate and we call this that we are in the state state which means that we are maintaining our rate. And then we arrive at, at the given RTCP interval and the congestion control algorithm says that we should start probing. So we enter the probe phase, which means that we are keeping the same media sending rate, but we are switching on pack rate on top of it, which is going to, to, in, to increase our, our, our overall rate. And then, if in the next interval the, the network, the RTC report says that our conditions are still stable, what we do is what we replace the FEC rate with the media rate. So we are, actually we are swapping the, the FEC with the media. And then we are entering again the state, state in, which, in which we are. We are going to the up state where we replace the FEC with media, and then we are again in the state state where where we are keeping the And then in the next report, the, the congestion control algorithm sees that we are now over two we are above the available capacity, so then we need to go the down state where we reduce the rate. Again in the next report we are we are seeing that it's okay, so we can we can be in the state state and, and keep keep our current state. But then we come to another point and we say, okay, let's probe again. So we are entering the probe state, we are again re enabling the fact, and we are then checking what, what, how, how, how the situation will evolve. And when it comes the, comes the next report, then what we do is that we are partially swapping the swapping the with the need. Because we have seen some of the losses in the beginning, we were overshooting the available capacity, and then we are just Replacing replacing part of the part of the factory. So this is this is our concept. And the the state machine for the for this fake rate control system it has this four states that I said: state, probe, up and down. And we don't want to define what are the con conditions for the transitions between the states. The, we want to make them algorithm specific. So. So, so that the system, is, the idea is kind of generic and any congestion control algorithm can just use it and amplify their own settings. The obvious question that comes to the mind is what is, what is the right factor? And let's, let's think about it intuitively. So if we have the high frame rate, then we have higher error protection because there are there are lots of tech packets that, that, that are in the network and the, the kind of even in the case of high losses we are, we are able to make up for quite many of these losses. And it's also the if the rate is high then, then the sending rate ramp up can be quick. But there is always the risk that we will overshoot the available oh. capacity and then, and then we'll, this will lead to the congestion. On the other hand, when the, the tech rate is low, then the error protection is also lower, and the sending rate increases, increase will also be lower. But, on the other hand, the, the, the risk that will overshoot the capacity is also significantly so, significant. so, what is our concept? 
our concept is that if we uh, perceive that we are far from from the from the limit of the, of the available capacity, we should um, we should start with the hyperbrain. Whereas if we are thinking that we are approaching the, the limit, we should, we should enable just just the very first step, okay, not to overshoot. So using all this knowledge, we have created the example of the fact-based rate control algorithm we call it fact-based rate adaptation algorithm. And here, here are some of the some of the main features of this algorithm. It's a standard-driven solution, and it's a delay-based algorithm. Uh, at the congestion queues, we use standard RTCP RR reports, and we also use extended reports, uh, RFC 3611, which to, uh, to calculate the losses and discounts. And we also use the one way delay algorithm, uh, it's called Sync and Sense, that allows you to do the proper uh, one way calculations without the need for the timestamp synchronization. And it's been presented by in this paper by, by, by this student. And as for the text scan, we use the standard XRA based RIT system. And in, the, in our research, we have defined that the number of packets detected by one number of frames, number of media frames detected by one pack frame should uh, differ between 2 and 14. And that too is a kind of absolute minimum because if it's well, then it's retransmission. And if we increase the rate beyond 14, <coughs> to 15, 16, then we have, we have seen that there is no obvious gain from those it because the chance of packet recovery is also smaller because the effect packet comes always later. And uh, the increase, kind of the, the gain by, by approaching the capacity limit with the smaller step is also so that's, that's why we have defined this boundary. And we have also defined the special uh, congestion handling procedures, which we call undershooting and bounceback. And undershooting is, is done when, when we enter into the congestion, we want, to, we want to reduce our rate appropriately. And what we do is that we know, based on the, based on the RTCP XR, what is the good good rate perceived by the Receiver. And we know what is the, our current sending rate, and we know how much time has passed since the last report, so we can calculate by how much we have overshooted the available mini capacity. So by undershooting, we are subtracting our new sending rate from the received input by the amount of data that we have overshooted. And then bounce back, it's, it's done to quickly bounce back to the, to the, to the rate at which, at which we have started congestion. And what we do is that from the, when, we, when we enter the bounce back procedure, which is followed by the undershooting procedure, is that we keep remembered in the memory the, the perceived output by the receiver at the moment of the beginning of the undershooting phase. And we are directly bouncing back to this, to this rate. Uh, let me just show you quickly two results of the algorithm. There are much more in the, in the paper. So this, this comes from the NS2 simulation results. It's a variable link capacity scenario. There is just one flow on this, on this link. And the one way delay between the sender and the receiver is 15 milliseconds. And we see that the, the red line is the change, change of the variable link capacity. And the black line is the, is the media rate. Whereas the blue line is the fact rate that we are up to, to prop for available capacity. So the average good put that we have obtained on this link was 179 kilobits per second, whereas the link capacity, so average link capacity available was 186 kilobits per second. Our losses were, were far below the one percent. And this, this is the results that we have obtained in the dominant scenario. In the kind of real-world implementation of our system, we had the one megabit link capacity, constant capacity, 50 milliseconds of the delay between the sender and the receiver, and there were two RTP flows competing for the shared resource in the same link. And 
The average flow output for both of them was around 360 kilometers per second. If the loss rate at this 1.25 percent. <coughs> but what was what was interesting was that we were able to increase the gob size to 12, where for lower, for standard conversational communication it's just about four. So we were able to to multiply it by by three without without any losses to the on, on happening on the network and transport layer, which provides kind of an enhanced QoE for the for the end user. So what, what are what are our next steps? We would like to generalize our concept to any congestion control algorithms. So for example we are thinking about making RRTCC to work together with to sum it up, uh, we, have, we are proposing a new rate control uh, approach that is based on FTC and it's, it's a generic idea that can be incorporated in any available congestion control solution. Uh, we have designed, a, I would say, a decent new congestion control algorithm. We are not saying that it's perfect, but we, by, by, by designing this decent congestion control algorithm, we, we show that, that this concept may be usable in the, in the future. The, the important finding is that by using FAC, we can greatly increase the, increase the GOP size to provide, and this also provides better QOE for the end user, and it also provides better energy savings, which might be important in the, in the mobile scenario. And our system is ready to be. Thank the speaker again.